Yo, dude. Have you seen my glasses anywhere? Uh... No? Are you sure? How many fingers am I holding up? Seven? Alright, you know what? I think I'll find them anyway at some point. Main cards! Alright, so before this video starts, please leave a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet. Also, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and Instagram. All links will be in the description. Now, let's move on with the video. Cantarella, disloyal. Deploy, play the top card from your opponent's deck. Now that just sounds like cheese, and that is exactly what this card is. Now, there have been two episodes, the Eridan episode and the last episode with the Dire Bear, where this card yoinked my win condition, and that's where I cross the line and say no. I'm gonna play this card properly, how it's supposed to be played, by just over committing to this card entirely in the deck build. So let's just see what I did. Alright, so I'm gonna be playing a double cross, Deck, the reason why I'm playing Double Cross is simply because it gives me the 17 provisions that I need for combos like Stefan, Skellen, Kingslayer, and Coup de Grass to work with the Cantarella since that is kind of the all-out play we have on that. We also have Marching Orders to find the Cantarella consistently. Then we have a little bit of a mill package with the Kingslayers as well. We play a Mantlet, a one-off Mantlet, which is a pretty interesting choice, but I think it's going to be nice to have that as an extra protection for my Stefan Skellen and Kingslayer in case I do not find the Fion. And yeah, this like whole combo, I'm going to try and pull it off in round one to mill my opponent as much as possible, since in round one, the likeliness of him having the best cards in his deck still are the highest. So that's why we have these high provision cards to basically just mill the opponent out of his best cards while, you know, kind of also sort of playing some points, hopefully. And yeah, let's just try and see what we can do with this nonsense. To be honest, I'm not looking to win any games with this. We're playing against Uprising here. Uh, that's interesting. They don't have that much interactivity. We go first as well, so hopefully find our combo pieces. We do... Oh, that's why I'm not playing. Okay, so we have the Cantarella on a stick here. Now, the only thing I need here is either Oneromancy, Menno, or just Coup de Grasse in my hand here. There's three options of getting it, so let's hope... Oh, okay, we get it. Okay, so we do have the full combo, right? This is the full combo. That's pretty interesting that we already hit this immediately. That's actually quite fascinating. I don't think I need the Diviner here. We get Oneromancy just, you know, to have it. That's pretty good as well. And I mean, this is just good, right? I mean, I can just start off with the Fion and then just play these guys and then just start milling this guy for like a billion points. Um, Cause like, I think he wants round control as well. So let's see if we can give him that round control. Probably not though. I'm just gonna start with the Fion into the Stefan, into the Letho. He's going to play that guy. I'm honestly not going to care since I have the armor protection on my uh, Fion, which is great, which is all I really need here. And we have the insured Cantarella as well off of our either Oneromancy or Marching Order, which I'm perfectly happy with. So we're just going to go ahead and play the Letho now as well. And we're going to float these. I want to mill him in one turn with the Cantarella and the Coupe de Grasse. He has to play one more card here and yeah. Let's just see. I mean, he. I don't think he wants to pass anyway. Like, he probably has to ca like establish carryover anyway, so... We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see what he does here. We get the... Uh, the target practice. And I mean, at this point, we can just go ahead and play this Cantarella here. See what we can get here. We get his Leo, which is okay. Boost itself by one. Maybe I shouldn't have played it in the row that isn't protected from the Fion. Opponent has lost connection. Uh, okay. Maybe we can thin out some witchers out of it. Ah, oh, no, come on. All right, thank God. I was hoping this wouldn't happen. I is he going to pass here? He might actually just pass here. It is a pretty good position to pass here. He does pass. Oh, man. I really want to do this, though. Okay, so I'm just going to I'm just gonna mill this guy, basically, at this point. Play another Cantarella here for a witcher. Play another Cantarella here 
for whatever we're gonna get. We're just gonna mill this guy. It's gonna be glorious. We're gonna get his... Ah, uh, that's not good, though. I, I kind of wanted him to keep this card. And we go for another Cantarella. Look how many Cantarellas we're playing in this first game of the day. We get his Griffin Witcher out of... That's pretty funny. So we milled one Witcher, we milled the Natalis, which actually isn't the greatest, to be honest. I would have liked maybe Amphibious Assault out of him here. And he's just forfeited. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure why he forfeits here. There wasn't really a reason for him to forfeit in this position. He wasn't in a bad position. The long round wasn't that bad for him anyway, but yeah, we'll take it, honestly. All right, who are we playing here? We're playing Ursine Ritual. This is an interesting one since we could just yoink his lippy out of the gate with our Warret, which is pretty funny. Um, opponent has lost connection. Maybe he already knows what's going to happen here. Okay, we don't have the absolute... Okay, actually, we do have still kind of a good hand here, to be honest. Going second here definitely helps us. We have the Cantarelle in hand. We only need the Coupe de Grasse. There's so many accesses to Coupe de Grasse in our deck. Can we find them? Who knows? Oh my god! And we hit the Coupe de Grasse for the second time in a row. Wow! Uh, the problem is that we do not have the Warrit. The Warrit would have been absolutely insane in this situation, actually. Because it could have just found the Lippy and just won us the the game off the bat. Okay, we get Oneromancy out of him. So this guy's just kind of like playing... Yeah, he's doing well here because he might know that we're Mill. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just do my strategy, what I did last game basically. I feel like this is a pretty interesting uh, position to put myself in. We're lowering his odds of like... I mean, he played his Oneromancy. Like, how well did he draw? How well did this guy draw? I, it's really just a question of how well this guy drew, honestly. Goes for the cock, okay, um... Not the greatest, I guess I'll just go stiff- uh, actually no, I probably should go Cantarella first. See what I get. Get a Gutting Slash, not the greatest to be honest, to find that card here. So it goes for a bro- oh, he's gonna kill the Cantarella, that is so smart! That is actually so smart of him, wow, that's... Huh, didn't really play around that now, did I? That was very clever from this guy. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think we could have played around that, honestly. Unless we, like, set up a coop earlier, which could be an option, but gonna be quite difficult, honestly. He's playing a lot of points here, so I might actually just have to pass here. This is a big oof, honestly. Big fat oof. So the Cantarella gets countered fully. Maybe we need a blue dream in this deck to put back the Cantarella <laughs> on our side. Um... But yeah, like, that was just an unfortunate turn of events, wasn't it? I mean, we are kind of forced to pass here, aren't we? Wait, how many points do we even have? I mean, we could try and mill his lippy, honestly. That would be kind of funny. That would be kind of I mean, he has eight cards in his deck. I'm just gonna go ahead and Hail Mary this. Oh god, we just find bad cards off of his. Yeah, I think he's just gonna pass here. I mean, he shouldn't pass, ever, but... As long as his Lippy is still in... his deck, he should never pass. Okay, so he doesn't pass. We get a free mill, but free mill doesn't really mean much... in this situation anyway. We have a Squirrel, though. Squirrel could be quite useful against the Ceres, I guess. And, yeah, I mean, burn a brand. He's thinning his deck quite efficiently here. He probably is gonna find his Lippy now in hand. With five cards in deck, it's very likely that he just has the Lippy. Let's just see what he discarded here. Discarded a Bear Witcher and a Squirrel. So no discard targets for him. Okay. But, I mean, we're so many points down. We're, like, 31 points down. There's no point in contesting this round. We don't have the reach here by any means necessary. Unless we have, like, a Cadaverine for, like, four or something. But yeah, the the kill on the Cantarella was just too good. It was too OP. And I can see him just bleeding us here. He doesn't have any gutting slashes anymore. We have two locks, which aren't actually going to do anything for us. Um, we have no way of setting up our, our Coupe de Grasse anymore. We have no more spies. Like, we don't run any spies. We're literally playing one spy and that is Cantarella. And that's the only, like, spy we actually need. So goes for the 
Heime scalp. I mean, the, if he doesn't have Lippy at this point, I'm actually going to be quite fascinated. So, yeah, I mean, he's probably just going to go for a 2-0 at this point. Yeah, that, that, it is looking like a 2-0. And in that case, it's also looking like a loss. Guy just kind of drew perfectly, I would say. Yeah, I mean, if, if this deck draws perfectly, there's not much you can do, to be honest. So what do we banish? I guess we just banish his... What's it called? His Ceres. Where's the Ceres? There's the Ceres. And yeah, I just hope for this not to be too bad. We have like marching... We can like play marching orders off of like the combo if we wanted to. Okay, goes for his last Blue Boy Lugos. This is a pretty okay Coup de Grasse, I would say. I mean, it's not great, obviously, but, like, what else am I going to do in this situation? Can't really do much here. There's the totem. I might just play my T-Boar here. I mean, yeah, he's he has heat. He, like, the guy drew perfectly, right? He actually drew perfectly. Like, when this deck draws perfectly, it's quite literally unwinnable. So, no idea how we are actually going to win this, but we are going to try and win this. I guess we can see what his highest provision card is. is oh, crap! He still has Lippy! Oh, my God! He still has Lippy! Oh, my God! You guys know what that means. Oh, my God! He actually still has Lippy. He has to narrow for it now. Yeah, he does. Okay, wow, I didn't expect him to still have Lippy. Crap. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for that play then. Because now we just lose because of it. Wow. Wow. Holy crap, dude. I did not expect him to have this card. Like, for realsies. Jesus Christ, he actually had the lippy. Wow, that's crazy. Huh. Maybe I should have just YOLO'd it. Was his last his last what was his last unit? Oh his last unit was the Morkvarg. Okay, so we kind of did have a 50-50 there on the lip whether we get Lippy or uh Morkvarg out. But I think we're just gonna get two. I mean he has to draw the Ceres still, right? I mean if we can keep leader, I guess we should be okay. So it does pass, which is okay. I'll just go for the Menno into the, the double Magni. Oh, Jesus. We're thinning out our Magnis. whoop de doo And, oh, wow. He still had a pretty good hand there. Jesus Christ, this guy actually drew perfectly, didn't he? Wow, that's crazy. Um, I guess this is good points. But it's not enough, is it? Ah, oh, crap. Oh, well, well, I guess we lose then. Feels bad. I mean, we're a card down against Lippy. Like, I can't, like, I physically cannot win this game anymore. Dude, he still had Lippy. We should have probably just YOLO'd it. We should have probably just hit something and YOLO'd it, honestly. I feel like that was the proper play, but... Yeah, what you gonna do? Like, he still has a nutty hand, though. He still, like, the guy drew perfectly. I'm not gonna deny that. Like, this guy actually drew everything he needed to. There was nothing we could have done against that, realistically. Letho's not doing anything. I guess he could have played another mantlet here, but... Oh, I accidentally mulliganed Vilgefortz. I mean, it doesn't matter. We just lose this game anyway. Like, it's... This game, like, yeah, it's unwinnable if he draws like that. All right, who are we up against here? Lockdown. Okay, lockdown. Oh, yeah, this is all about just getting that ball out. Give me the ball, baby. Give me the ball, baby. <laughs> Give me the ball, baby. All right, we do not have the greatest of hands here. We have a 50-50 on our menu currently. With the... Uh, what's it called? With the Cantarella. We do have the Coupe de Grasse, though. So that could be useful. I do hope I find the Cantarella off of my Menno now. That would be fantastic. Because then I could just like... I mean, I could also just banish his thing with the Kingslayer, which isn't terrible, right? So he's going to go for that. We don't have a lock in hand. 
I think we just do this, see if he has the ball. He does have ball. What is he going to do now? What is he actually going to do now? I'm actually kind of just tempted to Kingslayer that. Yeah, I'm probably just going to Kingslayer this. This is fine, in my opinion. Banishing his ball seems to be a fun little interaction that exists in this game. So I'm probably, he's probably going to go for a collar here. Going to kill the Kingslayer. And also play the Slave Hunter. Interesting. So we have one soldier here. Gonna try and maybe he has another. He probably has another lock, right? This guy, the guy, the way you get this guy is played. He's, he's got like 15 locks in his deck, but we also have like 15 purifies in our deck, so that is actually quite good for us. Okay, he plays the soldiers. We also have our soldiers. Um, the problem is like we have to purify this now, though. I mean, we got his ball. Ball is friggin' huge to get out. He had so many locks, this guy. Jesus Christ, I can't compete with that. Three locks in one round, that's just broken, guys. Nine point Master of Disguise is just insane, dude. It's like old Master of Disguise that was able to swap the power of a unit. And that was a fun little meta. I mean, it wasn't really a meta, to be honest. Okay, so we have the Cantarella, which is actually kind of funny. Uh, he's played out a lot of his, like, psh, uh, locks here. He's played, like... Two of his locks. I guess he still has like three left if he has Ramon and um, Alba armored, which could be kind of an issue. I guess I'll just. Oh. Oh, if he bleeds me here, that's good. If he bleeds me here, that is very good. I'll just play my defender now. Bait out the invo. He's gonna poison this. That's good for me, actually. Allows me to play my Stefan Skellen. Wait, why didn't he just purify this? I'm gonna go Kingslayer as well now. Actually, I probably should just go Cantarella here in case he does pass. Ooh, that's good actually though. I am going to poison this, I guess. I could save my Skellen here, Roderick. To Ramon. Oh, does he have a lock? That's so good if he does. Oh, he does. He's so talented. Oh, he's so good at this video game, this guy. Holy crap. Oh, he's so good. I get his Joaquim, though. That's pretty decent. Oh, okay, that's sweet. Oh, no, these are bricked. We don't have a soldier on our side of the field. Oh, Jesus. I probably should uh, replace these with the dogs. I'll, I'll replace these with the dogs in the next game, if I don't forget. Oh, he has one more lock, that's so annoying. He's just gonna 2 me, isn't he? He's just gonna 2 me. I'm gonna go Kingslayer here. Banish his Coupe de Grasse, that's not terrible actually. So what's his, I mean, he keeps his... Is he gonna play his lock now? I hope he's playing his lock now. Okay, he does play his lock now, that's great. I'm guessing his last card here is Invo, to be honest, but we'll just have to find out. What is the last... Uh, the last thing I played was uh, Coop de Grasse. Okay, so that's good. No, he does have Invo. Okay, so... I guess I just have to go for this, then. I think we just lose no matter what, right? Gets the Stefan out, whatever. And we just play a five-point Menno here, which is just bad. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, locks. Oh, the Ramon hit on the Roderick was huge. I think it was 100% though, so can't really be mad at that. All right, we're playing lockdown again. Maybe we can get our revenge for the last game. We're not obviously going to try and win games. Oh, God damn it. If he doesn't have color, this is so much easier, this game, to be honest, but... What you gonna do, honestly? Ugh. All right, two purifies is actually pretty okay. We can play for like the non-mill strategy in this round. I don't think I need two Magni divisions. I don't have the Stefan in hand. Oh no, did it have to give me that? Oh crap, that's unlucky. I guess I shouldn't have mulliganed this then. But like, I have to find golds here. Like, uh, meh. 
Oh, this would have been so good not to have in my hand here. Oh, crap. This is so bad. All right. I'm just going to play my Magni division. I probably should have played it front row since I still have Menno. Ah, but... Wait, is Menno bricked? Menno is bricked, isn't it? Whoops. Menno is kind of bricked here. This is such a bad deck build, but it's literally like built around this card. I could prob I should probably add Joust instead of Magni Divisions, to be honest. I should probably add like a lot of different cards in this deck, to be honest, but what are you gonna do? Oh, what's he gonna hit? Okay, he hits my lock. Oh wait, no, he gives Oh, okay, so he takes the Oneromancy. I'm not too upset with that. I can live with that, honestly. It's like whatever. It is what it is. The problem is I probably have to play these still. Like, I just have to play them for the four that they are. Alright, so he poisons that. Am I going to purify this? I probably should. I don't really want to, though. I could play try and high roll defender here, but I'm probably going to find the Cantarella. Oh, this is so sad. The problem with like the purify here is I don't have it for the Stefan when I actually need it then. I still have like reach with the other brigade here, which is okay. I mean I have reach with Tibor at like at all times it seems, in this round at least. So I can just kinda slow play this and just show him that I have the brick in uh brigade in my hand. Which obviously doesn't feel too good, but meh. Oh, he does pass. Wow, okay, that's that's actually quite interesting. So he gives us the opportunity to just mill the guy, so I'm gonna just take the opportunity to mill the guy, eh? Hopefully we can get away with it. Um, gonna be quite interesting to see if we manage to pull it off here. He's playing a bit of a weird variant here with mill. We get the Stefan. I have to mulligan one of the tactics here. I guess I can mulligan the Magni Division. Get a Kingslayer. So we have to 50-50 on our... Uh, Menno. So yeah, I'm just gonna try and 50-50 Menno here. Basically, into the Cantarella. I get the Defender, which... Eh. Eh, I don't really want that. I wanted this card. That's why- oh man, this- this defender being one power is so bad, actually. In this deck. Because I need the defender to protect Stefan, but I also need the- it to hit Cantarella a lot of times. Which isn't too great, but what you gonna do? I guess I can just, like, slightly mill him. Okay, he goes for the invo. That's... Okay, I guess I get a good Tibor then for the one point Fion. So it goes for the Mentor. <laughs> for four point Mentor, good job, buddy. We're gonna mill his Master of Disguise. I could go Coupe de Grass on Fion actually, that's actually pretty cool. I might actually just do that. Plays that, okay. Well, I feel like this is an okay play to make the Coupe de Grasse on the Fion here is a... Uh, it's, it's quite solid, actually. Um, am I gonna go on the Fion, though? Eh, I can probably very easily kill this with something like a Usurper now. So I'm probably just gonna boost it up so he has to hit for armor with this. Wait, how are we so many points up here? How did that happen? How do we get all these points all of a sudden? I don't seem to understand. Our round three strategy of Cantarella is gonna come to fruition, guys. The actual round three Cantarella strategy. He's got a lot of points here, though. He might actually have to be careful. He's playing a really weird deck. I'm not sure what kind of deck he's actually playing here. He's down by 17. Where is my guy gonna get 17 points from? I guess he got unlucky on his... Oh, he gets... we get ball out. That's huge. I'm gonna just pass here, honestly. Getting ball out is the same as milling ball in this situation, I think. So I'm actually just gonna take it and get out of this round. He probably still has Usurper, which is a bit of an issue. He's also running Devotion, it seems. 
Even if he has the Oneromancy, which obviously isn't his Oneromancy, it's our Oneromancy. He still needs 13 points. He probably has to commit something like uh, Joachim here. But does he not have enough Aristocrats? That could also be a situation. Mr. Opponent, uh, your time is running out. Oh, Fergus. Uh, Fergus ain't enough here, though, is it? Oh, Fergus is not enough by one point exactly. That's so sad. My opponent has to go a card down, giving, giving us double assay with Stefan. That is so busted. We're just going to play a bunch of Cantarellas, even though they're not going to play for any points. We can still play a bunch. Look at this Fion having 16 statuses on his on his body. This is a... I'm not sure how this actually happened. Uh, I guess the reason why is because this is hit a 4. So we know we're going to draw a bad card here. Um, we are actually going to draw the Coop though first, before we draw the Magni, which I did think it was going to be. Uh, gonna... Oh, okay, I kinda do one. Ah, oh, there it is! The Cantarella! We missed the Letho, which is okay. We still have double assay with our Stefan Skellen into the Cantarella, which I'm honestly not too fussed about. So, he has to have first say. Let's see what he plays as his first say now. I would've loved Letho, though, in this situation. Just playing a bunch of Cantarella is always funny. Round three Cantarella, that's that's not what the goal of this episode was, but it is where we are right now, so yeah. Okay, I'm gonna actually start my Magni Division since I do have the Purify on this. I should have probably played this front row, that was a mistake. Actually, no, I probably play Armored out like Cavalry first anyway, so yeah. Okay, gonna play the Diviner now. Diviner is actually gonna play for a few points as well since it does get boosted by the Cantarella. So if he has another lock, I'm just gonna lock his Master of Disguise. Could also use Vilgefortz on his Master of Disguise. But double assay here is actually quite huge. So Roderick, to disrupt my poor old Magni division, he's gonna go for his Cantarella. For my Kingslayer, what is he gonna mill? He's gonna mill my Sergeant. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I mean, we just, I think we just answer with our Cantarella here, right? And that seems to be appropriate. Go Cantarella. Oh, look at the points here. Um, I actually want to bleed this, so I can coop. Maybe I want to coop this as well, right? If I can coop this, that's actually not bad, right? I feel like that's pretty okay. I need him. He's not played Joachim yet, has he? He would be in my graveyard if he has. Okay, so he has not played Joachim yet. Funny that he didn't use the Gorthrude first before using Cantarella, that's a bit of a misplay, I would say. We did, did we banish his, I think we banished his coop, or was that the previous game? So my opponent just forfeits. So every game we won so far has just been through forfeits, or like every game we lost also we kind of just forfeited because we were powerless. All right, so I'm gonna play one more game in this deck, but instead of the Magni Division, I'm gonna play the Tourney Joust. Apart from that, I feel like the entire deck feels okay. There are some situations where Imperial Brigade isn't the best, but I do feel like we have enough soldiers to justify them being there over the dog. I did say I wanted to replace him with dog, but we don't have that many statuses as much as we have soldiers. So we're going to play one more game with this and see if we can pull off the combo in round one as we did in the first game, hopefully. All right, we are playing against... Oh, Vi. Oh, interesting. Okay, Vi... Vi, Vi, Vi. How, how good are we against this, actually? If we draw well enough, we should be in a pretty interesting position. But we drew absolute ass. Look at all the bronzes. Nothing but bronzes in our hand here. Our deck isn't, isn't even that polarized. We do have a lot of golds in our deck. Like, like look, half our deck is golds. Uh, so that is obviously not the greatest. We also don't have like a Vilgefort's Tall Punish here. Oh my god, this is so bad. Uh, do we just high roll? Like, Vi is going to be on top anyway, right? <laughs> it's just going to be Vi on top. What is he going to pull with his thingy though? Oh no, he's going to pull my Stefan into the front row. No, he's going to pull my Stefan into the front row. Our entire strategy is just... <laughs> I will have to wait for the Kingslayer though, because he might have the Vi in his hand. I want to see a Vi come down before I do the Kingslayer play. He has a Thunder. He has a Thunder and Vi. Oh my god, these people sometimes. 
I'm just gonna go do this then. Why would you play a Thunder and Vi? What is the point of a Thunder and Vi? What are you afraid of with a Thunder? You're playing Vi! Like, come on, dude. Seriously. I guess I just purify this. There's the uh, there is what I was fearing most of the time. Oh, for God's sake. Ah, oh, this was so bad. Mm. Okay, so he eats the Vi. I guess I just play this now. Man. Uh, if only I draw, like, half decent cards here, I could have a chance, but I just don't draw anything here. Alright, Kingslayer high roll me to victory. Oh, we, we get the Kriya, which is okay, but meh. I mean, we have, like, a lot of hits on Cantarella, but not anymore, right? Because we have no more. <laughs> Stefan. Ah, oh, Vi needs to be fixed. It's not... Oh, this is such a dumb card. I hate this. This interaction is so toxic. There's no doubt. Oh my god, this is such a toxic interaction. It's actually so broken. Yeah, Vi should not be tier 1. Like, that's just stupid. I hate that. I have not... like I, And we keep drawing bronzes. Look at our deck. Look at our deck. We have three more bronze cards left in our deck. All right, let's just draw more bronzes here, right? Oh boy, don't need the scroll, I think. Oh yeah, let me get more bronzes in this hand. Jesus Christ, guys. He passes as well. Why would he pass? Why, wait, why is he passing here? I don't get it. Why am I not playing the mantle? It's mantle, it's useless. All right, we're just gonna have the like high roll Cantarella, right? Just high roll Cantarella. And it's easy, right? Just high roll the Cantarella. And it's good. Like, that's all we have to do. It's just high roll the Cantarella. Like, scare him off with the Warrits. Okay, I, I, uh, I don't think I need this Diviner. Okay, that's good. Man, imagine I had Stefan in this hand, bro. I could have easily milled his Vi here, bro. Like, he has seven cards in his deck. Like, he plays one Vi. We can just mill it out. That's... So unlucky, dude. So unlucky that we didn't draw this in our opening hand. Or we might still get it. You know, we might still get Isvi out here. We're just gonna keep milling this guy pretty much. Um, I'm gonna wait, actually, a turn. I'm, I'm gonna obviously wait for him to play his Vi here. That is definitely something I need to do. Because Vi is... Oh, God. Vi is a very scary card. So are these larvae. These larvae are uh, super scary. Super duper scary. Oh my god, he has Neckers as well. I guess I have to... Nah, actually, do I? I go War it, right? To see if he has Vi in deck. He does not have Vi in deck, so he has the Haunt in deck. Which is actually kind of interesting. I, 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 I could technically trigger Haunts, right? So... Oh, Jesus. Probably should have kept my lock for that then. Do I just Cantarella now? Or do I wait, wait for War it? I mean, getting his haunt out actually isn't that bad, right? Wee! Uh, I should have probably played on the defender row. It doesn't matter. I mean, he's playing thunder. He might play a heat wave as well in that case. If he's afraid of that. Now just play, play one Vi, dude. Play one Vi, my friend. There's the Vi. He eats the ca- Oh yeah, he eats the Cantarella! That's all he needed to do, isn't it? Oh crap. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Vi is broken, bro. Fix Vi, CDPR. Come on, man. Oh, boy. Jesus Christ. I will never ever even be able to get a Death Wish as well, because he doesn't ever, ever play anything but that. So I guess I just do this, right? Jesus Christ. All right, just go for this. I don't know. All right, I, get, I guess I get, a, I get a nice little Death Wish here, at least. Eat the Warrit. Whatever. Wait, I think Letho actually triggers death. Uh, the last um, haunt if I copy the Noon Wraith, which isn't too bad, honestly. He eats. Oh my God, he eats one of those. Okay. Um, I guess I have to high roll here. High roll to victory, boys. Let's go. Hit the Vi. Ah, we miss. Ah, we suck. We suck so much. We actually suck so much, guys.
Could you believe that we suck so much? I I would I didn't believe it. Our Vilga Force is playing for so bad points as well. I mean, we're kind of keeping up tempo wise, but like his vise is gonna be like, what is it now? Wait, what is it now? It's a uh, it's a seventeen now. Yeah, Jesus. I think he only had very few units left anyway, so this is very sad. I'm a very sad boy right now. So Vilga for I mean, the Letho should be able to trigger the haunt. It does trigger the haunt, so I'm happy about that. That that interaction actually does work as intended. Now we don't have Vilga. Oh shit! I probably shouldn't play at these front row, right? Yeah, I should have probably not played these front row. <laughs> I mean, I actually, like, we're... I wasn't expecting to do this well in this matchup, but, like... Yeah. Oh my god, he had so many units left in his deck. I probably shouldn't have eaten the... That was actually negative points, wasn't it? Prince Vellum. For the 20-point Vi. I mean, does it really matter? Like, because, like, I will go for it. And he's gonna just gonna get another Vi, right? And he's just clogged me anyway, so, like, yeah, GG. Oh well, we missed the high rolls that I've seen a lot of people pull off against this deck, but yeah, we're just not talented enough, you know? All right, so Cantarella. Now this card, if you play an entire deck around the card and you actually manage to pull off that combo that I pulled off in the first game, your opponent is gonna have a bad time because you're basically just milling him out of so many cards in like one turn and it's really, really bad because you get to play them. And they're not going to end up in their graveyard or anything that they can really do against that. It's like super, super annoying. But that strategy obviously isn't very reliable as you saw in a lot of other games where that didn't work. So is this card good though? Like the card itself is actually pretty powerful if you don't play an entire deck around it. You obviously want to play like this as sort of like a combo card with Warrit or Courier or even the Nilfgaard location, which I forgot the name of, uh, where you can combo this, basically putting a card that the opponent played in earlier rounds on top of their deck, and then use Cantarella to put that card on your side of the field. That is where this card mostly shines, because you can kind of force out the opponent to obviously play a few gold cards in round one, and if you manage to do that, you can definitely get some good value out of the combo with the location, which we didn't play for in this video because obviously it doesn't really synergize with what we're actually trying to do, and that is just play all out Cantarella, and we need it to obviously replace the location with something like a defender to keep our Stefan and Letho Kingslayer alive. And yeah, Cantarella is a funny card. It is a very toxic card. I'm not sure how this card will fare going into the future. It's just that with this expansion, The Way of the Witcher, this card got a lot of support and it is a definite force to be reckoned with and it can definitely see play in tier two decks for sure in these upcoming few days because let's hope that the patch will come out uh, as soon as possible because I'm actually kind of tired of this meta at this point. But that's going to sum it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe for more Gwen content, and I'll see you soon.